It's interesting because I've always said that, you know, real estate is the commercialization of space to create the economy. Global civilization, human civilization has, for the most part, happened indoors, yep. under roofs, yep. certainly today, it seems to. And so it's going to cost a lot to decarbonize human civilization. Buildings and real estate out there consume so many other things that actually, if you're going to decarbonize this industry, you also have to decarbonize all of the feeder industries as well. In a big city like here in New York, it's 70% of the power is being used inside those buildings. That means we have to decarbonize the entire power grid. All of the building materials going into them, paints, insulations, those are made out of the chemical industry that is all powered by you know, oil, frankly. The total amount of money that the world is going to have to spend to decarbonize itself is about $275 trillion over the next 30-ish years. The IPCC says somewhere on the order of 90 to $94 trillion of built world infrastructure is going to become uninsurable or really face the brunt of climate change. It's a quarter. It's a quarter of all of the buildings, right? Your building might not be underwater, but what if the subway station down the block that everybody comes into the office through does end up being underwater? What if your power substation, you know, three blocks away, ends up being underwater? Most of these big complex systems we have, like cities, are actually very much sort of teetering on the edge. They are optimized for certain bands, and if you go slightly out of them, things break in ways that we don't understand. We're seeing this literally right now with the global supply chain because of COVID, right? Developing new technologies that can help you survive in this new environment is not something that this industry has ever really thought of doing. But I think the incentives are right. Where Let's just take an example of, say, uh, electric vehicle charging and solar. The real estate industry is sitting simultaneously on all of this roof space, right, and all of these parking lots. That is, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue that the real estate industry could catch if they wanted to. It's interesting because the real estate industry has always been a cash flow industry. Yep. It's basically physically instantiated bonds. They're just yeah. cash flow machines. It will be less of a cash flow business yep. when some of that cash flow has to go back into the building. We need to actually rebuild a lot of what we've already built in retrofitting. If there's a massive energy efficiency differential between a smart window and a dumb window, suddenly location becomes less of an arbiter of value and actually the product matters. There's a certain, I guess you could say poetic justice to the fact <laughs> that the real estate industry is in fact the largest contributor of CO2 emissions globally yep. and is also the most imperiled industry yep. because of climate change. What people realized I would say over the last decade is that technology is everything. It bleeds into everything. Everything is a technology company or should be. You know, we set out to decarbonize real estate and in so doing, we realized how big the opportunity was and how much more expansive it was. And that real estate was this great unlock. It, it, it's, it's actually probably the Rosetta Stone to global decarbonization.